What's up guys, Tony here with High Tech Check. Today I'm gonna to be showing you my retro pie nest that I made. I know a lot of people are trying to get that, that mini nest that just came out not too long ago and this is by far a thousand times better because not only does it play NES games, but it plays Super Nintendo, TurboGrafx-16, Genesis, Neo Geo, all those great games. So if you have a little bit of time and a little bit of patience, you can make your own too. So <clears throat> I wanted to keep it pretty much as original as possible, minus the two controllers in the front. I didn't really care to use those. I'm never going to, so I just changed it out to some USBs that I can plug in some controllers, a keyboard, whatever. So from the front, it pretty much looks just like the little NES that Nintendo's selling right now. The reset and the power buttons do work. Here on the side, this used to be the video and I changed it to uh, the other channel for the audio outputs that I have. And on the back, I changed the RF switch to the composite video out, got rid of the, the channel switch because we don't need it anymore, and I did keep the original AC connector, which is pretty nice. In addition to that, I added a HDMI port Looks great, 1080p NES, awesome. And then as a little bonus on the inside, you got your cartridge. And it's not just any cartridge. It's a Raspberry Pi cart. So when you're on the go or you just, you don't wanna take your huge unit but you still wanna play some you know, NES, Super Nintendo, Genesis games. This is a great option and it, you can keep it inside. It looks pretty cool. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to show you everything that I did on the inside and the parts to make this. I've already put everything together and it would have been really hard to try to solder and everything with a video camera. So I'm just gonna go over uh, in detail everything I did to make this. Okay, so there's only six screws holding this thing together and they're not crazy. You don't need any special tips or anything to take them out, they're just regular Phillips head. Uh, there's six of them all around here, just take those out. You don't have to worry about these two right now. We will check those out in just a few minutes. So now all these parts that I use in this project, I will be putting in the description below. And as for the Raspberry Pi cart, I'll be putting a link in the description for the tutorial that I found on how to put that together so you don't have to worry about that. Now you will have to have some sort of simple soldering skills when you're doing this. It's not that hard. So since I've already taken this apart, I have some pictures showing what you're going to actually be looking at once you take off the top of the nest. So here's a picture, basically what it looks like is this, you're just gonna have this metal cage with everything in it. You're just gonna unscrew all the screws that you can see so you can lift this piece out and then we're gonna put that off to the side. Also make sure you disconnect um, the power button connectors and stuff like that before you can take it out too. So now once you get everything unhooked and disconnected and unscrewed, this is basically what you're gonna be looking at, the guts of the unit. Now this little silver box off to the right here, this is what you're gonna have to disconnect from the main board because that's where the composite uh, connections are as well as the power connection. Now what I did was I unsoldered uh, some of the connections just because I wanted everything to be clean. So you can either choose to unsolder them or you can very carefully try to break off pieces of the motherboard from this 
this little junction box. So if you're going to unsolder them, there's like a, it looks like a five pin connection. And then there is also another couple pin connection over here that you need to desolder before you can take the motherboard off this junction box. And then you can also disconnect this piece of, it's like a little thermal heat sink for this, this piece here. You can take that off. And then once you get the motherboard off, you can very carefully pry uh, the top part of the case and the bottom part of the case off. And then once you get look inside of this case, there's going to be another little motherboard. Now, when you're inside this, you need to very carefully cut. I'll show you here. You're going to need to cut uh, as far away from the actual hookup as you can to give you a little piece to, to solder. You're going to cut, you're going to disconnect those connections and then you can very carefully uh, break away the board. There's there's like three parts on here where it's soldered. So you can, uh, what I did was I desoldered de that first uh, as well as the power connection had three solder pins that you need to desolder too. So if you decide to desolder it, great. It's going to be a lot easier to take everything apart. If you don't want to desolder it, you need to very carefully break away the motherboard from those pins on that power connection because you don't want to damage them for so you can use them later. So once you get it all cleared out and it pretty much looks like this, then we can get on to the inside of this case here. So as you already know, you're going to need a Ness whether or not it works, it doesn't matter. Uh, all you need really is the the buttons to work. Uh, if it plays games, who cares? It doesn't matter. You're going to throw it out anyway. And then you're also going to need a Raspberry Pi 3, which I have right here. It has uh, built-in Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, which is really convenient. So, once you have this piece right here all taken care of, you're going to take your composite RCA cable, which I got off eBay. I'll give you the, the link in the description below there. You're going to mark each one of these cables because you gotta remember which one was yellow, white, and red, and you're going to solder them to the connections on the corresponding connections on this little piece here. I'm gonna show you a picture. It's gonna show you a, a little closer up what it looks like. There's going to be black wires inside here, and those are the ground. Those are the, the parts you're going to solder to the actual connection in the back. And then that little prong that was hanging out, that's the connection you are going to put onto the other piece, which is red. So that red, they're all red. It doesn't matter which which color it was, they're all going to be red and black. So that red piece solders onto the little prong and the black piece solders onto the actual connection in the back, as you can see in the picture here. So that's it for that. Just remember, like I said, make sure you, you get your colors coordinated to each connection that you want or else it's, not, it's going to be all screwed up. So let's move on to the power connection. So with the power connection, I, like I said, I didn't want a little micro USB. I wanted to use the actual power connection that it came with. And to do that, what I did was I had I purchased the Raspberry Pi power connection from Adafruit. It's, I believe it's a five volt, 2.5 amps, if I'm not mistaken. I had to cut off that end and I had to solder on the actual NES connection to use this, uh, the original part right here. Now the tricky thing is it has a negative and it's got a positive. Depending on how you solder that back onto the connection is gonna determine which one of these pins is positive and ground. And when you make that connection, you need to make sure that you know which one is which. I just used the voltmeter and when I connected it to here, I touched the voltmeter to each one of the pins and it told me 
which one was power on ground because that's what you're going to need to use to hook up to this little uh, Mossberry switch here. So just keep that in mind. Uh, now as far as the Mossberry switch, what that does is it allows you to use the power and reset buttons because if you don't have that and you just turn off the power abruptly, you could corrupt your SD card on your Raspberry Pi 3 and you don't want that. So what the Mossberry switch does is when you hit the power button to shut off the unit, it, it so it softly shuts it down so it runs a script telling it to shut down it shuts down and then it automatically cuts power to the unit so you don't have to worry about that and then with the reset switch is uh, sometimes when you go into the menu of RetroPie and say shut down it shuts down the whole unit but the power button still depressed so it's still getting power so then what you do is just hit reset and it'll it'll shut it off or you just depress the power button and then hit reset and it'll shut it off. So that's that. I'll have a link into this description below for that too. Now, as far as the HDMI cable, I got that on Adafruit 2. And it's a panel HDMI connection. So what I did was I created a little template. You take, you take a, a piece of paper, a piece of white paper, uh, depress it over the HDMI portion and then just take a, a pencil and lightly mark over the whole piece of paper and it will make like an outline of the HDMI connection. And then you just take that piece of paper, put it over your nest and line it up to where you want it. And then I took a razor blade and I cut out that little impression that it made as well as the holes. So when you go to drill, everything lines up because it's already, it was sketched out on that piece of paper. So that worked out pretty good. For the USB connections in the front, I got them from another company. It was fairly easy. They're like these snap-in connections. You just need to get some, um, some glue and you could glue those in there because they were moving around so it's also like a panel connection and if you can see you see the little holes in there you need to get like a dremel or something and just cut off the very sides on each ones to make them fit don't touch the top or the bottom you just need to cut off each one of the sides you're also going to have to dremel out that extra little portion up by the red triangle to make it a complete square for that to fit in there. You'll also need to dremel out a little bit this left side and on the other connection too on the right just a little bit so it can fit and it'll like clip in real nice and then as far as this goes you take off these two screws this panel comes off you push them in and then you push this back on well because you're pushing this over these sockets here, it kind of bulges out. So what I did is you very carefully sand these little black connections down. So it, see, as there's a gap in the back here. There wasn't originally a gap, but when I sanded this down, it brought this forward a little more and it gave room for the USB connections to fit. So it actually worked out really good. So then once you got that all hot glued in and everything, where I put my Raspberry Pi 3, it didn't really have enough room to reach. So then I had to buy these like six inch extensions, USB extensions to make everything fit properly. Depending on where you want to put this in yours, you may not, you won't have a problem if it's like in the middle or maybe over here or something. But for my setup, this was the perfect spot for this uh, Raspberry Pi 3. And I'll, I'll show you in this second part that I'm doing here. One more thing, because of the Mosberry switch that I got, I'll show you the one that I have. You need to have at least two micro USB ends. So you're gonna cut these ends off and then you're gonna end up using the cables that come out the other end. 
one was for the power cable here the exposed end that I cut I hooked up to the power cable here and then I plugged that into the Mosbury switch and then from the Mosbury switch the exposed ends going from there and they come over to here to the in so that's where you need your extra micro USB end so that's it for that and then it's got these blue cables here I'll put a link in the description below that shows you exactly where these cables go as well as the pinup here oh yeah one more thing I forgot when you hook up all these cables to the the you solder the cables to the Mosbury switch you need to make sure that you desolder your LED and flip it and resolder it because the LED will not work unless you do that because the the polarity is reversed so just keep that in mind when you do that so that's it for the bottom here I'm going to show you what I did to the top so as you saw I had a little hook up here where I could put my my retro pie cart it's like a little holder so when you take your bottom piece off you can you can keep this black part just disconnect everything like the springs and all the other parts you just take that out and you're gonna keep this now I used a lot of double-sided tape and velcro to keep the Raspberry Pi 3 connected to the bottom part here just in case you may need to take it out or something you don't want to affix it um, right to the bottom uh, one more thing I forgot to show you I'll show you a picture but underneath the Raspberry Pi 3 there's a piece of metal that I clipped out from that metal casing that was over everything you can do that if you want it was a little harder I didn't think about it at first but there's little holes that are in the Raspberry Pi 3 you will need to make those just a little bit bigger very carefully because you don't want to split the board just drill that out a little bigger and then you can kind of screw the board into some of the little screw ports that are already on the bottom here so that that may work out a little better for you so back to the top here there's this piece I used hot glue in the corners here and I also used this very heavy double-sided tape for underneath on the top you just put it on to the top and then just push it down so it stays in place then I got a 5 volt little fan I believe it's a 4 four millimeter or four inches all around and I used double-sided sticky tape for that so when you put the top down when you put the top onto the bottom part and you connect this to the 5 volt connection GIO pins it actively cools the little heat sink that's on top of the Raspberry Pi over here it perfectly fits everything fits great you, you're gonna hear a little hum from the fan but it's not that loud it just I'd rather keep the Raspberry Pi cool and have a little bit of noise so that's that now this has the power it's got the um, ground and power cables on here and you just need to correspond that with the pins on here the very first pin on the left here is a power the second one's a power and the third one's a ground so what I did was I connected that little connection to the second and third pins on the left hand side here and that gives power to the, the little fan for you um it works great I'm really I'm really happy with the, the way that this project came out I've, I I saw some other things that people have made and they kinda don't look very neat and I I like that one last thing I wanted to tell you about this uh, the HDMI when you're cutting that out or drilling actually I started off with a very small drill bit right in the middle so to make a hole and then I took a file and I very carefully filed out this whole this whole thing that's the neatest way I found out to make this so you just start off with a, a small Dremel small enough to where you can fit a file into it and then slowly you can you know graduate to a bigger file and then just 
very carefully file out everything. It it took me uh, uh, many tries before I got everything perfectly aligned, but I think it looks pretty clean, so. So then you just put everything back together and plug it in and you're gonna have to run a script before you can use these these uh, buttons here and that will be in the link that'll be in a link in the description below too as well so now i'm going to give you put this back together and i'm going to show you a little demonstration real quick here's a little teaser for you a retro pie nest cart with an 8-bit dough snes gamepad okay guys so here it is all set up Here's the power cord that I was telling you about. I spliced off the one end that came with the power supply for the, the Raspberry Pi 3, and I soldered it in line along with the connection for the Nest, just so I could still use this if I needed to hook it up to the Raspberry Pi 3 or anything else. So you could do that, it's pretty simple. So I'm gonna go ahead and hook this up here. And I'm also using a PS4 controller. It works because it's got the analog sticks and everything, it's really nice. So then you just hit the power button. I don't know if you can hear the little, the little whine. <laughs> And you just hit the power button on your PS4. It syncs up. And there you go. You got your retro, retro Pi Nintendo console. Now I will tell you this, all the parts and everything cost me a little over a hundred dollars, but <laughs> if you're gonna buy the little Ness for close to 200 like everybody else out there, it's well worth it because like I said, it plays more than just Ness. So I think it's pretty cool. So if you guys, oh actually let me show you one more, one more thing here. So. When you're going to shut everything down, you can just hit the power button here. It runs a script, as you can see. It shuts itself down, and then it cuts the power. And that's what the Mosbury switch does. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, and don't forget to share my videos with everybody else. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the little notification bell to let you know when I put out new videos. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your support. I hope you guys have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one. Later.